This video we're going to look at Bloodborne the board game. Now if you've played the video game that was on PS4 as the PlayStation logo in the corner and show it's a PlayStation exclusive. It's basically think of Victoria London inspired by Lovecraft but with Dark Souls mechanics behind it such as dying over and over again using souls or Blood Echoes in this case to get experience and level up and buy things and a lot of weird and wonderful enemies. This was on Kickstarter but I did not back Kickstarter even though I've got quite a lot of it so it came out more expensive but never mind about that. This is just about the main game, no other expansions which hopefully I'll get one to at some point but yeah there's quite a lot of them so um yeah, don't expect anything anytime soon. The game was done by Michelle Chanel. I apologise for the knackering of the pronunciation. And Eric Lang. Now, Eric Lang I have heard of before. He has done um, several day games for Simon before, which are the publisher. Um, and it's wonderful players because you can play it on your own. It's a fully cooperative game. The time limit is between 60 and 90 hours. We'll get on to how that can not necessarily be true, depending on how you play. But we shall go on to look at what is in the big box. Now, this is how I've got it inside the box. So if it looks a bit different to how it does, when you first open it that's kind of obvious um, because the tiles themselves are on punch boards the tokens are on punch boards all that's kind of normal but first thing is the rule book now it's in full color it's got nice artwork mostly taken from the game it gives you details of what's inside it and how game structure works, combat, everything like that. Um, but there's one thing that the rule book fails on massively. And, well, massively is a bit of an exaggeration, but it fails quite a few times, is some of the rules are not explained clearly, or some of the mechanics are not explained. The bitty, biggest example I've noticed is... Um, insight where where it's you've got some where you get insight to do things this means insight missions it's not clear in the book how that works but the cards say when you've got so much insight it actually means insight missions and it doesn't really explain that in the book which is a big shame it the first two times I played it on my own I had no idea what I was doing and I lost the first one big time but now I've played it a few times, that's the only thing that rule book um, does badly. Which, considering it was on Kickstarter, you'd have thought it would have been ironed out. I mean, the artwork's nice enough as well. That's taken straight from the game, but it really does look like an art set piece. With Yarnamites watching over everywhere, and some Yarnamites burning... A scourge beast. Next we have these four hunter dashboards in four different colours. 
I'll get on to why that's the case in a minute, but apart from the colours at top, everything's all the same. You've got your health when it tells you and it tells you your maximum. You've got you put your blood echoes here, you put your firearm here, and you put your trick weapon here, which we'll go on to as we progress. And we look onto the back. Again, it's got that nice artwork from the front of the box. Next we have this impressive looking sheet, which is the hunter's dream. You've got three slots for your different enemies. You only get three, sometimes four, depending on how the mission works, where you've got three enemies. You do choose where you put them, but depending on what tiles get down, depends on what spawns. Mm -hmm. uh, down here we have the deck, where you put the deck for the chapters. And each deck is split up into three chapters. You don't have to play them all at once because that will take a long while, but you can. Next is where you get your upgrades, where you can spend your blood echoes. Um, there's four, there's a big upgrade deck, and when you take one, one from the deck gets put down. And down here is the timer, essentially. So it starts here, and when it races here, You've got one more turn, and then if you can't complete your mission, you lose. Next we have the tiles. Now, there are 20 tiles in total. Uh, the reason this one is face-up is because this is the one that all players start on. This is the central lamp tile, and all players get to choose which, three space, which one of these three spaces they start in. These will show you where your hunters can go. So, if I just grab this one for example, the artwork is really nice, I've got to say. I know it's probably um, computer digitised on, but it looks really, really nice. So, so that can go there because it's got a little um, walkway cut into it. But if it's like that, where it's all black, then it's like a wall and you can't walk through. Um, that's the Grand Cathedral where you'll see Vicar Amelia. And you've got other ones such as, you've got quite a few random ones with no names attached to them. You see what I told you about things spawning and then you've got some chests. And then you've got things like the Odin Chapel, Tomb of Odin where you fight Gascoigne, the Church of the Good Chalice where you fight the Blood Starved Beast. And let's see what else we've got. We've got the courtyard lamp, which is not which is not like the central lamp. Uh, the ransacked house, which is more in the I think it's in the forbidden woods. Even though the main basic box only deals with central Yarnum, cathedral ward, and old Yarnum, if I remember correctly. You got another random one. And you get one with two enemies and a chest. Very nice. What else do we have? We got another random one. Uh, yet another different random one. And another one. This time two spaces and a thing in the middle. Very nice. Uh, another random one. Uh, the occupied house. Uh, oh, we've gone back. And I'll show, show you the last lot. We've got the Great Bridge. This is a evil one because you've got these little things. This is hunters may not move out of spaces containing enemies while on this tile. So when you get the tile, an enemy spawns, which I'll show you when we come on to how the game works. And if you if there's an enemy on this space, then you can't move out, you're gonna have to fight it. And that's where you fight the um cloak beast in the game, I believe. Yusefka's clinic, uh, the alleyway, yes it's named the alleyway. And the barred window, where you find the girl who gives you the music box to help you defeat um, Gascoigne with. And, of course, the graveyard. Next, we come to this inner box. But what is in it? I'll explain in a minute. Firstly, you see this nice logo, and also the thing that the um, doll sometimes says, Welcome home, good hunter. And you also get this thing, which, if you want to scan it, feel free. I don't know what it is. I've had the game for a bit. I've no idea what it does, so free scan on me. You're welcome. On the back of the inner box, it shows you what's actually inside it. So we've got the upper tray and the lower tray. It basically 
shows you where to store them and where they go and how many of them there should be. Once you've got it open, you'll find a plethora of different enemies and hunters to have a look at. Now, these are all painted. The enemies and bosses were painted by myself. The hunters were painted by my friend John Pearl, which I'll put a link to his um, painting page so you can have a look at what he's done. In the top tray, you get ones such as Gascoigne, or Father Gascoigne, as he's known. With his pistol, but I'm pretty sure I've got a blunderbuss. Put in the comments below if I'm wrong. I probably am. We also get Gascoigne in his transformed form. I'll just show you here. I'll show comparisons off to a hunter, but he is a lot smaller than he should be. Gascoigne looks bigger than the hunters, but yeah, I've never noticed Gascoigne is actually taller than hunters. Next we have four male beast patients. Focus please camera. Thank you. These remind me of Gollum just in bandages and furry. Just got a furry collar and bits of fluff sticking out. Um, these are possibly the weakest enemies to fight, although they can potentially poison. Uh, there's four of them, all uh, moulds, miniatures are the same. So four of these, exact same one. They don't look any different unless you paint them all different, I guess. Four female beast patients. So I'll just show you these. Like I said, all poses are the same, which look nice. Um, it it makes it easier to determine what's what. But would, I suppose it would have been nice if there were multiple poses, but it would have been a nightmare to actually make them fit into the box. I guess there's that. <laughs> Plus, it would probably cost more as well. You get four hunters, such as the hunter with the hunter's axe. So painted it more in sort of like healing church colours with the white white robes. I know there's a bit of black, but we'll let that live because got a black hat and whatnot. Make the details stand out a bit more. Focus, please. Thank you. And the threaded cane hunter. So this is more of a standard hunter sort of attire. Lots of browns and warm colours. And yes, this one does come with the cannon. <laughs> the Saw Cleaver Hunter. The um, iconic sort of hunter of the game. Uh, holding the pistol and the Saw Cleaver. Focus. Thank you. I think he's doing a really good job on these. I mean, even if you're not the best painter, these will paint up lovely. I'm not the best, and the amount of detail makes these so easy to paint. And finally, for the hunters, for you see there are only four, you get Ludwig's Holy Blade. Yes, this is included in the base game. And for me, she kind of looks like Vicar Amelia in a human form. And as you can see, she got a rather long pistol, also known as the Evelyn. Yes, that's her starting weapon. And it's in great sword form. And a lot of a lot of white, a lot of off-white and whatnot. I'll just bring in um gas going, just to show you size. So gas going is a fair bit taller, but that's pretty much bang on to how it does look in the video game and I'll just show you Gascoigne transformed for me he's a little bit short I reckon he should be a little bit taller but mm, that's just me and then I'll show you compared to a female beast patient I reckon that's about spot on <laughs> I didn't realize this but yeah I reckon that's spot on and a male beast patient. Um, what do you reckon? I reckon that's a bit big, but then again, if they were smaller, 
wouldn't be able to see the detail as much, I guess. What do you reckon? You also get these four different rings. Now, if you remember when I was going over the Hunter board, there were these different colours, which are identify with these rings. So once you've chosen your Hunter, which we'll get on to in a minute, you get your Hunter, and if you correspond with the colour of your Hunter's board, you just plug it in. Now, if you painted these, these might take a bit of a while to go in and you'll scratch paint off the bottom, I guarantee it. Um, but really, when they're in, it doesn't really matter too much. And to be honest, it's not really coming over too, too badly. Just don't put too much attention on the rim of the base if you're looking to paint these. When you've gone past the top layer, you come on to the much bigger bottom layer, which include four of these. They're the same sculpt and I've painted them all the same. Four of these scourge beasts. Focus dear, focus camera. I've tried to paint white on the eyes. I've tried. <laughs> um, bandages. Maybe the base is a bit too big perhaps. Um, serve the purpose. They're supposed to be long and gangly. Um, just put these up to a hunter. I think these are about spot on for for how they look scale wise. For a hunter's minion, or as I like to call them, Rick Trolls, and I'm sure a lot of people do as well. Uh, I've painted two, uh, two different skin tones and two different um, trouser colours, but everything else is the same. So I'll just bring in this one. Focus there. Thank you. So, cause, as you can see, I've done a purple for the cloak. Uh, the, like I said, they're all the same pose. Uh, no shoes. Actually, has he got one shoe? No, no shoes. Uh, a lot of bandages. This game uses bandages quite a lot. Why is it? Sonic Boom. Uh, bandages on the arms, on the head. Uh, massive brick, just because he likes to hit things with bricks. Uh, these aren't bad to take down in the game. It's a nice chunky enemy to take down. A nice chunky model. I'll just compare these to Hunter. Again, I think these are pretty spot on for size comparison, as it were. Four Hunter's mobs, and you get uh, three models on the base. Uh, word of warning, if you want to paint these, be careful. I took these off the base. You really want to put little dabs on the feet or something to know where exactly to put them on. And if you do that, it's going to be a pain to get them to stick. Otherwise, they will break off and fall off. So get the right sort of glue to stick them on once you've painted them. Just a little note, but this is basically how they come. You've got a bloke with a rifle and a lantern. You've got a bloke with a torch and a axe and then you've got a bloke with another torch and a shield uh, these are kind of like your basic grunts you'll be facing a lot in the board game uh, I painted the different colours uh, I just thought it were nice just to have diff different uh, cloaks so one's got a brown cloak here one's got a black cloak here just make them all seem different because they the mobs really uh, just compare them to a normal hunter. They are about the same size actually, so I think these are pretty spot-on again Scales pretty good for these I think Next we have four church servants. Yes, I know in the game the skin is a pale darkish blue don't at me <laughs> But anyway, yeah, this is how I've done them um it's a very alabaster white, what I've done for the hat and the coat, which I think is how it works for me best personally. And um, blue light in the lantern, which kind of is how they go in the game if you've got too much insight, in the video game anyway. And just compare it to a hunter. A um, little bit small, only about a hair small, but I don't think it's too bad. I'll just zoom into detail wise. Focus camera. 
thank you. Um, yeah, nice. It's not, it doesn't feel like it's got a huge amount of detail on it, but I think it's got enough to to be getting on with. Um, one thing to note on these is these aren't stuck down, so these can be bent, so just, just be a little bit careful. Everything else is not too bad on these, I don't think. And finally, for the standard enemies, I repeat, standard enemies, we have the Church Giant. Now, this isn't in scale, and it is a fair bit smaller, but... And I know, skin's not right colour, but I just feel it works for me. And I know, the cloak's in black, but I, ju I just feel like it works for the thing in Bloodborne, where ch the, the church um, go cloaks in white are higher up than church cloaks in black. Um... It, I just think it works best for me, so I just I'll just show you close up of detail before I go into how they look compared to a hunter. Got a bell attached to them, a nice big chunky axe. It's got some detail on it, but um, not overly detailed. But you could go to town on these because these are really good. So you can see torn trousers. And the back is just basically layers upon layers of cloak and cape and whatever else. Just compare it to a hunter. Yeah. I mean, it's a lot shorter than it is in the video game. But for this sort of size, it's still massive. Yeah, that's just ridiculous. <laughs> Next we come on to the other three bosses because Gascoigne and his transformed form are of course bosses. Firstly we have Vicar Amelia which to be honest is in my opinion the easiest boss in the video game. Well in the board game not the video game. She's rather hard in the video game. And yes I know the um, skin is a bit darker and not as white as it should be but I just feel it makes a lot of a difference. Uh, if you want to get this fur sort of colour I've got, paint white, then off-white, then paint straight on silver. The, the silver won't take, but it will do a nice effect, I guarantee. Uh, I've tried to do the teeth as well. Um, I don't think I've done too bad. Um, I think, I, yeah, I've done a little bit more over the top of the nose, but... Eh, I can live with that uh, fur and long strands of hair. Um, if you're good, you could probably paint in the um, little amulet or whatever she's carrying, but I'm not, so I'm not going to. A lot of bandages, yet again. And there's the back. I'll just show you the top with the antlers. Focus, dear. Thank you. Uh, there we go. And just compared to, to a hunter, she's a lot smaller. But even so, she's still a fair size, still very threatening looking, even though she is, when you do reach her, fairly easy in my opinion. Next is the Blood Starved Beast. Yeah, um, this was really nice to paint. Um, I probably said it before, but the um, Blood for the Blood God technical paint from Games Workshop really really makes this look amazing uh, I'll just zoom in on the detail as you can see bit of fur but mostly skin and bone literally uh, Professor Skin Flaps as I like to call him thanks Rusty um, long finger nails and toenails as it were um i don't know if this is a bit big you'll have to put comments below but this is the blood star beast next to a hunter so i don't know how accurate that is to scale it probably is it probably is and finally the priesta resistance of the bosses is the cleric beast now this is the nicest model as far as I'm concerned in the game or miniature depending on how you say it I mean the bones this was a treat to paint 
I'll just zoom in. Ooh. The Yarnamites have come after me. <laughs> nice claw detail. And it's standing on a plinth because why not? And there you've got its big arm. Then you've got um, its arse. Um, like I said, it was a treat to paint. It really was. And they've kind of um, put some detail on the plinth. Um, it's got cracks. I've tried to put weathering on it. I don't think I've done too bad. Uh, compare it to a Hunter. Um, slightly small, I think. But I think it works out. Um... I mean, if you put it next to the plinth, it's about that sort of height, which, um, yeah, I think it's a bit too small, but it still looks absolutely terrifying next to that. That just looks... Rough. Once you've gone through all the models in the box, you come to all this. Now, this won't exactly be like this when you first open it, Obviously the tokens will be in punch boards and everything else. But what is nice here is everything has its place. Places for the decks of the chapters you'll be playing. Decks for the upgrades, enemy attacks, uh, boss attacks and so on. Um, place for the trick weapons you'll be using. Place for the enemies, place for the health tokens, and basically everything, which is really nice. Seamon's really good at putting everything in its place. This goes here, that goes there, everything's got a place. So firstly we'll look at the um, hunter boards you get. You get the saw cleaver hunter, the threaded cane hunter, the axe, well hunter axe hunter, and the Ludwig's holy blade hunter. Um, each side has got different attacks and um, art on it and uh, how it works, got a special thing on it. And then at the bottom it says what the other side has because you can transform them to be different. <laughs> yeah, so for instance, this side of Ludwig's Holy Blade is weaker, so it is faster. And on the other side, it is slower and powerfuller. So next, looking at the various enemies, we've got the Hunter's Mob, Hunter's Minion, Scourge Beast, Female Beast Patient, Male Beast Patient, Church Servant and Church Giant. Uh, each one's double-sided, which uh, it says choose randomly, but I don't know how that's possible because they're double-sided. I just think it's best if you go for what you think and then go from there. Some missions will say randomly choose which... Um, Enemies you fight, uh, for me it's just basically a case of one person tries and conceals it for everyone else and everyone else uh, tells them to stop on the enemy and that's what you fight. Or you could choose, you know, you've got options. How many enemies boys we've got here? We've got um, four, seven different basic enemy types. The four models of each. Uh, next we come on to the player aids which are basically helpful tips tips on how, what things does what such as dodging staggering stun frenzy poison and on the other side you've got the actions you've got the uh, round summary hunter's dream attacking and reward cards and then we come on to the um they sort of like mini bosses um and they um could be depending on the quests you do uh, they've got a little number on there which Significant uh, shows you what number of players there is. So, for instance, on this side it's one to two, on this side it's three to four. And you've got the Bloody Crow of Kanehurst, never seen him in the video game. Uh, comment if you have. We've got Yasefka, we've got uh, Jura's Ally, we've got Alfred, Hunter of the Vile Bloods. Yes, we've got this crackpot. Uh, we've got Old Hunter Henrik. Or Henrique, I suppose. Uh, Eileen the Crow. Because she's northern. And then we've got uh, Old Hunter Jura. So, yeah. We've got a nice thing here. Um, 
They're not that easy, but they're not that hard. They're a nice challenge. Uh, next is, uh, this doesn't come with the bags, but uh, if you've got a bag, it's a nice place right there to store all the health counters and the mark for the um, turns. It's just a nice place. I couldn't think of anywhere else, so there's somewhere there for them. Uh, next here are the um, boss cards. You've got the Cleric Beast, Father Gascoigne, Father Gascoigne Transformed, Blood Starved Beast and Vicar Amelia. And each one is double sided. For you see, each one has two phases and the numbers signify um, how many players. So phase one of the Cleric Beast, one player, 10 health, two players, 14, three players, 20, four players, 24. It might seem that's ridiculous, but with four players and upgraded enough, it ain't. It ain't, well I say it's not that hard, the Cloak Beast is a fairly hard boss to fight. Uh, Vicar Amelia, not so much, even though she's got more health in Phase 2, strangely enough. Next we have the weapons that the Hunters come with. You'll know which weapon you start with because that is the same as the artwork on the Trick weapon boards. So if I just find... Evelyn, this matches with this artwork, as you can see here, so that's what you want to start with, but you've got the Evelyn, you've got the Hunter's Pistol, well you've got two Hunter's Pistol actually, and a cannon, and then on the other side it says what it does to refresh it, because once you've used it you're going to have to do something to refresh it or wait till you go to Hunter's Dream, we'll get on to that on how to play. Next we have the weapons that you'll find from doing various quests and insight missions. So you've got Ludwig's rifle, another Evelyn, another cannon, uh, a hunter's blunderbuss, a flame sprayer, a repeating pistol, the Rosemarius, and that's a bit tit. And then like the weapons the guns you start with it has a side where you have to do something to refresh it to be able to use it again it's quite a few here uh, some are more useful than, than others depending on how you use them or what's your favorite um, please note that nothing here comes with anything that's to do with the DLC next we have four decks which are exactly the same these are for each of the hunters and these work exactly the same. You've got three uh, dodges, uh, three plus one damage, which that's what that means, uh, three staggers and three draw ones. And there's four of each type, so there's 12 cards in the deck. And you shuffle them and you draw to do the attacks, which we'll get onto on how to play Bloodborne. Next we come on to the upgrade deck, which... At first glance, you might think, hang on, these look like the normal decks the hunters use. That might complicate things a little bit until I show you how they look. You've got things like um, Dash. Uh, let's see what else we've got. Um, tactical. These all do different things. There's some uh, replications, so more people can have them as you expect. Now, that's what it says it does. But if I just draw one of the ones from the Hunter deck, it says basic. Uh, all the ones from the Hunter deck say basic. It's because when you put the upgrades into the Hunter's deck, and when you come to take them out to put everything back, you're not getting confused because all the basic ones go together in each deck, and all the upgrades go together with their different names. Next we have the consumables, which actually it does say consumable. And these are things that you find in the game such as the beast blood pellets. What else have we got? Uh, the whoop, blue elixir. Uh, these all do different things. The bold hunter's mark, which actually bad in the board game. Pretty naff in the video game, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, Quicksilver bullets, there aren't many of them. Out many of each item actually. Uh, another Bold Hunter's Mark, Bolt Paper, uh, Lead Elixir. Each of these have the uses that you can use at various times. Molotov Cocktails, of course, uh, Beckoning Bell, 
throw knives, which is all well and good. You've then got to your various runes, which look on the other side, do different things and give you a little bit of flavour text on how they work. And then on the face down side, you've got um, different rune marks, like they're shown in the video game, which is nice. Next we have the tools. Um, these act similar to the runes, um, but they're called tools instead of runes, and like the runes says what they do and a bit of flavor text um like the runes and the extra guns these are given out depending on what you complete on insight missions and such like and there's a fair few of them next we have the enemy action deck there are only six cards uh three basic two special and one ability which i'll just bring in a hunter mob so these, these get shuffled and depending on what's drawn you'll either face a basic attack, a special attack or an ability and these are slightly different on each side which of course mostly the basic attacks are all the same uh, so and it does actually say in the book as a bit of a tip make sure you know what cards have been discarded so you know what sort of attack is coming out so you can kind of game it that way should I use a slow attack, which will do more damage, or should I use a fast attack, which will actually go before it? Next we come on to the boss action deck. These work similar to the enemy actions, except that it actually says the full attack on the card, on these cards. There is no basic special and ability on the boss cards, if you remember. It just says the health, how many players It'll do in a bit of artwork in the phases. And so, likewise, there is a phase one deck and a phase two deck. Um, there's a phase one and two for each of the different bosses. And these can be quite horrible to fight. <laughs> um, there's at least one card. Uh, li sorry, like the enemy action deck, these will get shuffled once you've discarded them all. But once you've been through them, you'll know what sort of what's coming out. So just just make a note of what attacks have been out. The Cloak Beast is really vicious in this. Next we have all the various tokens. These include such things as Blood Echoes, the Named Hunters, Broken Lanterns, Fog Gates, Treasure Chest, Insight Token, Dead Body, Survivor Tokens, Poison, and Frenzy. And then we've got the Quest Decks. There are four of them. I'll just show you this one as an example. This is the Long Hunt, which the instructions actually say you should start out with. Um, I could say the secrets of the church because Vicar Amelia is the easiest boss, but you start how you want. Um, so this gives you a bit of details of what's going on just an introduction card next we come on to a setup there is three one for each chapter because each deck is th split up into three chapters uh, you don't have to play them all at once i recommend not doing that i recommend um saving progress which no you note down um what hunter's got what upgrades items and so on uh, it says Focus there, please. Thank you. Uh, the different enemies, the tiles, and then on the other side, what you do to start. So, start a front, reveal card one. And to move on the courtyard lamp, reveal card five. And to move on the occupied house tile, reveal card eight. And to move on the ransacked house tile, reveal card twelve. It's kind of a choose your own adventure sort of thing where it goes through if you land on this thing, reveal this card. If you've go on this thing reveal this card if you do this thing reveal this card um it's not said in the book if you place these on top of each other which you shouldn't these are separate quest things you you'll have to do as you go on uh this one will face one of their earlier bosses and obviously each one has its own separate boss encounter some of them appear earlier than you may think but that's the way it goes. Get in there. 
To start with, each player chooses a board. So for instance, I've gone for the blue one. You then take a little disc, like this, which matches the colour of the top of the board. You then choose one of the four hunters. Either the Ludwig's Holy Blade, the Threaded Cane, the Hunter's Axe, or the Saw Cleaver. The weapon that goes with it, so for the Ludwig's Holy Blade it's the Evelyn. For the uh, Saw Cleaver and the Axe it's the Hunter's Pistol, and for the Threaded Cane she comes with the cannon. <laughs> Once you've done that, you then get the miniature associated. So, for instance, just for this, I'll show you the saw cleaver. So, I'll just get the weapon associated. So, got the board, got the weapon. So, I'll get to the miniature. So, this is the one for the saw cleaver. And then what you do is you get the little disc, pop it in to the base like so. This is just to show who's using what hunter and in some expansions you'll find there's things like mini bosses which will look like the hunters so it's best to know what are enemies and what are players. Once you've got all this you then put the firearm with this side facing up not this side, when it's um, the picture's all dulled out, you want it on the brighter side, put in the firearm space, like so. You want the trick weapon card, putting here, uh, it doesn't matter which side, it's player's choice, so I'll just put it on this side for now. Then you take some health tokens you it suggests you take three ones and one three just to confuse you you place them all here like so then you take one of the four decks and give them a good shuffle make sure you've got four of each of the cards that say basic so three of these three of these three of these and three of these because that's what you should have to start with and then just give them a good shuffle and then just put them near to your hunter's dashboard and you are ready to begin once you've set up the hunter's dashboard including the deck and the chosen miniature you then need to set up the hunter's dream board. Firstly you want to take this little token which is your timer and place it, I'll just zoom in, place it here. This will basically act as your timer and this will move on as you go on through the game. When it reaches over here you have one more turn and if you do not complete the mission you lose. You then need to put the chapter down. Now in this case we'll be playing the Long Hunt deck. So that all goes here. And then you take the upgrades. Give them a good shuffle. I know my shuffling skills aren't amazing. But they're good enough for now. Then place them to one side next to where it says upgrades here and then place one upgrade in each of these slots like so. Then once you've done that you can then start laying out the starting cards for the mission. So the first one is always the introduction, you can read it out, it's just basically text. Of all the monsters created by the Beast Plague, the Scourge Beasts are the most reviled. Once human, these terrible monstrosities are fast, agile and lethal. 
As of late, more and more of these beasts have been approaching in, in central Yarnum, and thus we have been tasked with discovering the source of their increasing number, as well as eliminating as many as possible. So you can put this to one side, discard it, whatnot. It's just telling you what the mission is. What I would suggest doing, because they're all put at front when you first open the game, is look to see uh, what card you reveal at the start of each chapter and then put it on the one before. So for instance, if chapter two, chapter two says real card 23, you put the the chapter set up before, after, sorry, chap, um, card 22. So on the setup side for chapter one, it tells you the enemies and the tiles needed. So it says we need the hunter's mob, hunter's minion and scourge beast enemies. So once we know what enemies we're facing, we get all three of the cards. So like it said, we need the hunter's mob, the scourge beast and the huntsman's minion now we can choose either side although it does say random it's best to choose and you can also choose where they go now for the first one i recommend putting the hunter mob on both sides like this on this slot and the other two entirely up to you i'm afraid i can't really um help you any more than that with especially with the hunter's minion uh, I prefer putting it on both sides on the slowest I'll get on to speeds in a minute and then with the scourge beast put it on this side that's what I recommend anyway so then we come on to the tiles we need now we always have the central lamp tile so that's always included, but we also need the courtyard lamp, occupied house, Odin chapel, ransacked house, and two random tiles. And this icon means per hunter, so two random tiles per hunter. It does say max six. Now, this unfortunately is a misprint. It's supposed to say max five. Um, pretty much every mission will be maximum of five, just to let you know. We then get the tiles we need. So starting with the central lamp tile, which looks like this and has this special thing on it. Interact on the central lamp space. Teleport to any lamp, is what that is, uh, space or inside any fog gate. So if you interact on here, you'll be able to teleport to any fog gate or any other lamp. So you put this in the middle of the board, well, middle of the table. Make sure you've got enough room. I can't stress that enough. You then get the named tiles required. So the ransacked house, the courtyard lamp, which does look similar to the central lamp, except it has one less where you can go. The occupied house which has three ways and an enemy and the Odin Chapel which has a lamp and three ways you can go in three spaces uh, the thing it says here is whoop, uh, enemy attacks suffer minus one speed I'll get onto that while on this tile mm. we then get to the random ones now it does say include all the other named ones but I like to play it with just all the other nameless ones. Uh, you can include all the named ones if you want, but I, I think it fits more if you just include all the random ones. That's just me. So what I like to do at this point is make sure all the random ones are face down. Give them a bit of a shuffle. And then draw how many you need. So in this case, five. So one, two, three, four, five. Then what you do is get the ones, the named ones, 
and shuffle them in with the random ones you got. Do your best to not look like an idiot while shuffling, especially on camera. I just like to try and prove it is indeed random. Do your best I can. Then put them to one side. Again, make sure you put them somewhere where there's space, like so. And then remove any you don't need. We then need the right to enemy miniatures. So for this one we need four Hunter's Mobs, four Hunter's Minion, and four Scourge Beast. It's best to put these somewhere safe where you know where they are and within easy reach for you will use them <laughs> quite a bit. You then need to put the other various decks around the Hunter's Board or where you can actually get them where they won't be in the way of the tiles. So starting with the enemy actions, give these a good old shuffle. So that's them. I'll be placing them here, I think. Then we need the consumables. Uh, these will be one of items where you can have as many of them as you want. Just be careful to when to use them. Sometimes they'll be more useful than others. Sometimes they'll be a bit naff. But it's like any item or whatnot really. It just depends. So I'll just put them there, like so. I'll just move that over a bit. Next we have the Hunter's tools now you don't really need to give these a shuffle and you don't really need them down you just need them somewhere where you can get hold of them i'll just put them over here like so uh, these are rewards for usually completing insight missions or sometimes for doing the hunt missions then we'll need the carol runes again like hunter's tools you don't need to shuffle them um, like the car like the hunter's tools, you only get two of them, so you can have two tools and two cowl runes. Once you're set up and ready to go, you place your chosen hunter any of these three spaces on the central lamp. I'm going to put my hunter here. It does recommend if you're playing on your own to have two hunters, but for this example, I'll just be using the one. Once you've set everything up and put your hunters on the starting tile, the central lamp, you can flip the setup card over and here's where things get interesting. At the start of hunt, reel card 1. And move on the courtyard lamp tile, reel card 5. And move on the occupied house tile, reel card 8. And move on the ransacked house tile, reel card 12. So, we'll do as it says, real card 1. All the cards do not stack, I have to let you know. Um, a lot of them are inside missions, so just lay, get yourself some space to lay them out. So, reeling card 1. Hunt mission, this is the main one to win. Source of the Scourge. We must take to the streets of Central Yarnum. The number of Scourge Beasts grows, and we must leave no area unchecked and uncleansed. We must also gather what information we can from the surviving townsfolk. Perhaps they can grant us insight into the cause of this sudden infestation. So, end, end a move on the, sen on the central lamp tile after you've collected at least two insight. Reveal card two. What this means is once you've got completed two insight missions. So we need to complete at least two before we can continue for the main quest line. At the start of each turn, hunters draw up to three cards for their hand from their deck. Now, unless a item or a card says otherwise, you can only have up to three cards in your hand. So, for example, in this case, I've got plus one damage. I've got a dodge, which also says clear this slot, and a draw one. T 
to do anything pretty much you either need to discard cards or put them down to attack. Um, to move you need to discard a card so I'll put one down there to show it's discarded. Each move is two spaces so if you want to go six spaces you're going to have to discard all your hand. This kind of works like a stamina system in Bloodborne or Dark Souls. When you move too fast you run out of stamina so you can't attack. It's kind of a similar sort of mechanic. You also need to discard cards to interact with things, should they be survivors, chests or anything else. A uh, bit of a pro tip from me, well, pro tip, <laughs> a tip from me. Don't discard a card for your first move and don't discard a card for interactions. I just feel it doesn't really help all that much and it doesn't really take away all that much. But that's just me. If you feel it's right to do so, you go on. I feel it's I feel it's best if you get one move for free, so two spaces, that's it. And then you've got two more moves, so discard two cards, and then that's all your moves you can do. Unless you've got items or other things that allow you to do extra moves. From the hand we've got, we'll, I'll discard the draw one card. So that's gone from my hand. So that will allow me, I shall move down here, I think. So I'll just zoom out a bit. And what that allows me to do is, the first move I'll have to reveal a tile. And then the second move I could either move fo forward, move back, or stay where I am and see what happens. So. The first tile is the occupied house. So there's three walkways as you can see. So that I'll just put that I don't know, I'll put that like that like so. That will allow me to move either further down or across that way. So I move either I either move to there or there. So I'll go on to there. Now I'll just zoom in on the enemy icon because this icon also matches this. What that means is a hunter's mob spawns. That gets placed anywhere on there. It's not an exact science but it just basically Go down like that. That hunter's mob that's just spawned, I think it's time to dispatch it. So, it's time to show you how combat works. Combat works in the same in both hunter's turn and in enemy's turn. Hunters get to put an attack down if they're able to, which I am. I'm going to put because I've got a plus one damage and a dodge. I'm going to use the plus one damage. Now in the hunter's dashboard you can see you've got the unique um, attack ability for the weapon side. Each one's got two depending on which side you use. So for instance for this side where it's more like a saw it's got attack with stagger also deal plus one damage. And then on this side where it's more like a cleaver, you've got uh, on kill, draw one, it means draw one card, and heal one means heal one damage. So we'll stay on this side for now. Uh, this is the speed, so this is speed three, that's speed two, and on this side it's got a speed one. Speed 1's fastest but usually does the least amount of damage. Speed 2 does a fair amount of damage but nothing amazing. And speed 1 usually is quite slow but usually does really heavy damage. And on the bottom here it says what the other side does just in case you forget. So to attack you need to put the cards 
the stat card, which are these, um, on to the attack you're going to do. Now I'm going to put that on there. You then look on the enemy stat card. So this is the amount of health they've got. You don't need to take them down in one turn. We'll get on to that because there are technically one exception. Um, there's three different styles of attack they've got. You've got the basic, you've got the special and you've got the ability. So we've seen what my attack is, but now we need to see what the enemy attack is. So, going on the hunter's mob. Then we need to draw the enemy action. There are three basic, two special and one ability. It does, like I've said, say in the rule book, try and track with the discards what cards are left so you've got some strategy of what's coming up. So let's see what gets drawn. It is a basic. So what that means is it does at speed 2, 2 damage. Now our attack is at speed 3. So our attack goes before it dealing 2 damage, 1 for the basic axe cut, 1 for the extra damage. So it does 2. In return the hunter mob does 2 damage to us. However, we have a trick up our sleeve. A lot of firearms block basic attacks, such as the Hunter Pistol. When an enemy makes a basic attack, automatically stagger that enemy. Now what stagger means is negate that attack. Usually when attack cards say stagger on them, you need to have your attack speed faster than the enemy attack. Because that's the basic. I will flip it over to say I have used it and stop their attack. My attack goes through, but theirs does not. But say their attack had gone through, if my hunter's pistol couldn't have been used, or I had a different firearm that didn't really work in the same way, such as the cannon, I would have to dodge. Now luckily I have a card to use to dodge. Now you can use this to attack, but if you do use it to attack, you don't get the dodge effect. You just get the stat at the bottom. You can dodge at the same speed or faster speed than the enemy attack. So I could put it in either two of these spaces. If either of these two were speed one, I couldn't put it there. So I'll put that in there, dodging the attack, and then that gets discarded. My damage still goes through. So what that means is I put two of these one damage counters next to the hunter mob just to show they taken damage. When a hunter takes damage you just take them off the part of the hunter dashboard that shows your health. Now one of the things was end a move on the occupied house tile reveal card 8. We should have done this before the hunter mob spawn but we can do, do this now. So, don't draw and look at the others, just get card 8 and then put the others back and then flip it over. It is an insight mission. You know this, if it would focus, thank you, because of these little skulls, a safe haven. You knock on the door, from inside a frail and elderly voice addresses you. A hunter! About time you showed up. It ain't safe out here for an old woman. Reckon you could take me some place to wait out the night. Place one survivor token on the occupied house space. Any hunter may pick up the token when they move out of that space. The token is returned to the occupied house space if the hunter teleports or goes to the dream. And then once you've done that, end the move on the Odin Chapel tile with the token card 9. So that's one of the insight missions we need to do to progress the hunt mission. We then get a survivor token and place it on the occupied house base as it says. If a hunter moves out of a space containing any enemy, so for instance this way, the enemy will move with them. That's called pursuing. 
they will only move them one. Some enemies will move more spaces, but mostly they'll move one. Should a hunter want to interact with something such as a chest or a survivor and there's a enemy in the same space, the enemy gets a free strike. That doesn't mean you can't dodge, but you can't put an attack down. It now moves on to the enemy turn. Enemy activations go in a set order. So it starts with any with this icon, then this icon, then this icon. So for instance in this case, they start with any hunter mobs, then any hunter's minions, then any scourge beasts. Now it works like the hunter's turn, so if the hunter has an attack, they could put that down before the enemy attacks. I've only got my dodge and I'm not going to put that down just yet. I'm going to use it to dodge the enemy attack because I've used my pistol. So, what do they draw this time? A special. So if we look on the hunter mob, we can see the special is a shield bash which is speed 2 and does 2 damage with stagger and stun. Now stun only appears on enemies and what that means is you have to discard a card from your hand or you take an extra 1 damage. Now I've got my dodge and I could put that in either of these two spaces because it can be the same speed or faster so I'll just put that there so I dodge their shield bash so I don't suffer stagger or stun. Now say this hunter wasn't actually in combat with the hunter's mob, all enemies that are in the same tile or an adjacent tile to hunters move one space towards the hunters. So in this case the hunter mob would be one tile away adjacent from the hunter so he, they would move to there. I mean, this, do, this doesn't work if it's like that, because it's a solid wall. The hunter mob cannot move through it, but in this case they could, because there's a little walkway. But hark, what if you are facing a boss? Well, my friends, things work a little bit differently. You need to get the required boss card, as the mission at the time dictates and the boss attack deck sometimes it will say go for phase one sometimes it will go straight to phase two for you see as i've said each boss has two phases like everything else put it where you've got some space the boss will say how much health it has depending on the number of players so the boss will say how much health it has depending on the number of hunters so for instance if there's one, in this case there is, it's only got 10 health. If there's two, 14. If there's three, 20. If there's four, 24. So you've got more options with more hunters, but it's got more health. Attacking it works out the same initially. Hunter puts their attack down, which in this case I shall put plus one damage in there. But what happens differently is the enemy action deck is not used instead it is the boss deck in which case we'll be using the phase one cloud beast so we'll see what is drawn because it does say all the stats on it that are needed which in this case is the overhead slam speed two four damage targets all hint hunters in this space before this attack, one hunter in this space may exhaust their flower arm to place one insight token on the cloak beast's card. This attack deals minus one damage per insight on this token. Some bosses interact differently depending on what you have and what they do and such like. Different bosses are faster than slower depending on what they are. Most of the cloak beast attacks are either speed two or three so be a bit careful the attack of me hunters at speed three so i'll be going before it doing dealing two damage to it and i'll be taking four damage in return or three if i use me hunter's pistol be careful of cards such as this which have no true attack on them 
these are more of utility for the boss and they can be a pain for instance this one remove all insight token on the cloak beast card block two damage from hunter attack shuffle cloak beast action deck so this gets discarded and then every other attack gets shuffled back in and it means all insight which can weaken it or be removed <laughs> once you've removed all health from phase one flip it over onto phase two uh, sometimes it'll, the boss will have more health but mostly they'll have less you then get rid of the phase one deck and replace it with phase two deck should you have any damage left over f from the attack that killed it removed it from uh, phase one from phase two rather they that does not spill over so for instance if you needed to do one damage to kill the cloak beast and you did four damage you do the one damage and the extra damage would not spill over you just deal one damage and that's it when all enemies and hunters are finished the hunter's track moves up one if hunters should go to the hunter's dream because they want to get upgrades by discarding a card or they die the hunter's track token moves up one again so you could keep getting upgrades each turn but you will move this up two parts a turn meaning you will lose quite quickly should a should the token reach a red space this is called a reset all enemies heal all damage and are put back where they spawned all chests are put back so you get more items it does mean that it can be quite hard because enemies all spawn in but it does give you more chance to attack enemies and some insight missions or main missions do require it should a reset happen then the boss's health is regenerated to full they are not placed back where they started unless the mission actually says so but the boss does heal to full other actions hunters can do is transform their weapon they do this by discarding a card which in this case I will discard the draw on this means all attacks are cleared from the weapon slots and this is the only way you can get rid of cards other than when they say clear this slot so all these go to discard if they're all filled you can't attack so transforming when you've got at least one slot empty is kind of necessary in my opinion anyway and then this gets flipped over to the other side if you want it back on the other side you'll have to discard one to transform the weapon again um, you, you'll sometimes need to use cards to discard to reload your gun some guns will require you to discard more than one card some allow you to get rid of other things to reload it you can like I say go to the hunter's dream you discard a card to do so should you want to go to the hunter's dream aka you weren't forced to by dying you take your hunter model from whatever tile they were placed and place them like so you then take all cards from your deck and discard and any that was placed on your weapon put them all together but don't shuffle them because you'll not need to at present and just put them face up for now heal yourself up to maximum which is six if you've lost any health and reload your firearm you can also transform your weapon for free at this point you then get rid of all blood echoes you have and for each one you get rid of you get an upgrade so for instance I'll take this one the rapid one which is dodge draw one clear this slot not bad you then replace it with another one so for instance say we got two blood echoes we get to choose another one which in this case I will choose the adaptive which is 
Got a dodge and a stagger. Clear the slot so I could either use it to dodge or use it to stagger. Nice. And then place from the deck. You then, for each upgrade card you have, you then need to get rid of one from your deck. You only have up to 12 cards in here. No more, no less. So for this example, I will get rid of two draw ones. I don't think they're much used, but other people I've played with have found them quite useful. So it just depends how you like playing the game. Once you've got rid of them, put them to one side to show they are the ones you've removed. And then shuffle the upgrades in with your deck to make your slightly more new and improved deck. Well, depending on how many upgrades you've got. You then move the track on by one. So be careful. Should you get killed by an enemy by obviously losing all your health, you then go to Hunter's Dream. You lose your blood echoes, but you reset yourself in all the same way. So you, all your deck goes shuffled back, you get all your cards back, you get all your health back, you transform your weapon if you want for free, and you reload your firearm if you need to. Then the Hunter's Track increases by one. So yes, you are on a time limit and it can increase depending on how badly you do or how greedy you get. This is a co-op game after all and you do need to work together because if you don't you will all fail. Should you complete the main mission it will give you rewards as insight missions do also and you'll be able to go on to the next chapter. Each of the um, quest lines has three however if you fail one chapter you must go back to the first one so for instance if you fail chapter three you must go back to chapter one this seems a bit unfair and the main consensus between all players is that you don't do that you just restart the chapter that you are on so that's bloodborne board game it's a very nice game i will be going over the expansion i've got which i've got quite a few um the rule book is i feel the biggest downside because it could have been a couple of pages bigger which would have explained a lot of the rules a lot better for me at least and i think most people do agree with that sentiment uh, other few things is rules such as restarting the quest line from the beginning rather than resetting the chapter you failed should you indeed fail I like playing it where you just go back to the chapter you've just failed instead of going back to the beginning that just seems a bit much to me there's a few other rules that are a bit eh, but that's just my opinion as it were but it is a fine game you are looking at between 70 and 100 quid to buy it depending on where you buy it from of course i think it's a lot of fun um i'll be going through a quest line at some point but i just wanted to show the game off give you my thoughts and basically what happens <laughs> how to play through it as it were <laughs> so that's it for this video thank you for persevering and waiting with your patience for me to get back and doing videos it's been a while but we'll get through them anyway goodbye for now <laughs>